Playing Real Madrid. Now we're talking about long COVID this morning. That is the term used to describe the effects of COVID-19 that carry on for weeks or months after the sufferer first gets ill. It's thought that as many as one in five COVID patients go on to have symptoms that last for more than 12 weeks. So that's a million plus people potentially at any time. And these symptoms include fatigue, breathlessness, joint or muscle pain and brain fog. Well, Five Life Breakfast has been given exclusive access to a long COVID clinic at Croydon University Hospital. Our reporter Jim Reid spent time with staff and patients at a physio class. OK, now we're going punching forward. One, two, one, two, relax. So this is a physio class at Croydon uh, University Hospital. It's about mid-afternoon, four o'clock, and there's three or four people recovering from COVID. Up to the side now. One. Most were infected in the first wave of the virus and are now suffering prolonged symptoms, long COVID symptoms. I'm just having a look at how he's managing on the treadmill today. Um, so last week he managed to do 10 minutes, so we're going to increase it a little bit today. It's difficult. I get aches and pains and get very, very tired, shortness of breath. And relax there. Cool. Everyone feeling a little bit warm? We're going to speak to you, Asim. He's sitting in the, the weight station in the middle of the gym and he was first infected back in March last year. I'm sort of 70% of what I was. You know, kind of flatlined in terms of the improvement, so I'm not sure whether this is going to be a permanent thing or whether this in time will improve, but it's 13 months now for me. And yeah, it's just uncertain. No, the acute illness was fine, not really too bad. I had a period of recovery after the illness, and after about two months, the symptoms started to return. Um, they peaked kind of in November or December of last year and um, since then there's been some small improvement but it's been slow. Yeah. The breathlessness is the bigger one for me, um, throat issues, muscle aches, tightness in the head, um, all array of symptoms. Up to the side now. One, two, one. Uh, hi, I'm Kim, I'm one of the physios in the post-Covid rehab team. So we're doing a, a post-COVID six-week exercise class for patients that have, had, have got long COVID. And we run, do aerobic and strength exercises, and then we run it for six weeks and do a bit of education. And from the people that you see who are recovering from COVID or have had COVID in the past, what are the main physical challenges, main physical difficulties they have? So a lot of the patients uh, struggle with their ongoing fatigue, and as well as breathlessness. Um, so we have to kind of balance doing a bit of exercise but also having a bit of uh, pacing activities and, and trying to not to push it too hard. Steady yourself and then start again. Remember, pick a point in front. So this physio down. session is a bit like cross training. You go from one machine to another. So people are using weights, they're using uh, treadmills, they're using rowing machines. And the idea here is to but to act as a kind of support really, but also to measure that recovery and to make sure that people are making the progress which, which they should be making. In the Croydon Borough, this is the clinic that you're seeing here. And then we have to wait for individual specialisms to give us any kind of answers. And most people aren't getting answers. Although we appreciate that sometimes there are no answers to give. That's on social media platforms, you'll see the numbers that are on the support groups and people are having to speculate and be their own doctors. And something there needs to change. We need to be taken more seriously and um, being given more support. Very tough, debilitating for the many, many people who have been experiencing these symptoms for months on end. We'll speak now to Dr. Yogan Uaste, who's a consultant respiratory doctor and one of the people running the clinic in Croydon. Good morning. I would say that perhaps your patients are some of the lucky ones because they have access to your services. Uh, this isn't the case for everyone across the UK, is it? Morning, um, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Uh, so we're very well set up at Croydon. Um, we've got an excellent team with uh, therapists and a number of different clinicians across the whole multidisciplinary team. Um, we've we've been we've been very fortunate that colleagues have really clubbed together to give up their spare time to work 
out of hours to try to provide support for all these patients um, to try and help them as much as we can. Going the extra mile. Yeah, we spoke to an immunologist earlier who was telling us a bit about what research is being done into the causes of long COVID, if we can give it that term, talking about maybe whether the virus still sort of exists within people's systems as a sort of virus reservoir, um, talking about the organ damage that's done by the virus, talking about whether it's sparked some kind of autoimmune condition, which effectively attacks the immune system. That That's some of the potential causes of this, but you're really looking at trying to help people and the symptoms, aren't you? What What do you think is the most effective way to help people get back to some sort of normality in their lives? I think, um, I mean, Professor Altman put it much better than I can. And, and until we have a greater understanding of the pathophysiology, so what's driving some of these symptoms, all we can try to do is listen to the patients. And I think one of the uh, patients that you interviewed earlier said that they just want to be believed. And I think that's really important that that as clinicians, we take people seriously. Uh, there are huge numbers. Um, I think Jim Reed, your reporter, said that earlier. But we've got to remember that each of those people is a person and their story is very individual. And you have to listen to their individual concerns and try to address them as best you can. Um, we don't have the, all the answers. And I think people appreciate that when you say we don't know. Um, and they, they appreciate the honesty. In terms of actually helping them, we're trying with physical therapy to uh, improve their fitness, but to understand what they can do and, and keep within that sort of energy envelope. And we also have a very good um, a psychology support service. Um, so patients are getting uh, that aspect of care as well. Yeah. Um one message that we heard there in the report, and I've heard this from other people coming through long COVID, not to push it too hard, that you have to allow your body to make the recovery quite slowly, because otherwise, I suppose, there's a danger that you just go go too far, too fast and push back into the symptoms, is there? It's certainly a recurring theme that we're we're hearing with with some patients, uh, particularly those who felt they had quite a mild illness um, way back last year when nobody really knew anything about this um, and went back to work quickly because by and large those people were otherwise fit and well with normal jobs, normal busy lives. And um, quickly they discovered that they were not able to do that. And yes, it is really important that um that there's a sort of pacing to to their normal activities. And that's something that, that we can help. So our therapists can explain to them how to do that um, and support them through that and, and slowly, incrementally uh, increase what they're able to do. Thank you very much uh, for your time this morning, uh, Dr. Y- you. Yogini Raste. And a message here uh, from one listener. Um, anyone who knows anything about post-viral uh, conditions will know uh, that uh, it's so difficult trying to treat these conditions. Um, there are real challenges to it. Thank you. 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 Real challenges.